Hello and welcome to part 7 of Knitting Machines for Beginners. Today we are going to look at how you can cast off your knitting. Now the simplest way to do it is just to take the yarn out of the carriage and knit one row across and your knitting will fall off the machine, but of course it will then unravel really easily. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at ways of providing a permanent edge to the knitting. And our first one is called the backstitch cast off and it involves a needle. I like to use a children's plastic needle like this, but any large bodkin will be fine. For this one, first thing you want to do is you want to remove the weight from the bottom. Okay, you don't want the weight there. Um, and then the next thing you want to do is you want to push all of your needles with your knitting all the way forwards like that into position D. And that way you can see you've got lots and lots of nice clear loops. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my end of my yarn which needs to be at least three times as long as the knitting is wide and I poke it forwards through the second stitch and then backwards out through the first stitch thus creating a little back stitch like that okay then I go forwards in through the third stitch and backwards out through the second stitch and I'm going to carry along the row doing all the way down the row like that now the brilliant thing about this is that it forms a really nice elastic edge so if you're doing anything like a collar or the um, sleeve of a jumper a cuff or if you are joining two pieces of knitting together on the machine then this is absolutely perfect um, the downside to it is it takes a little bit of time but that's fair enough um, you know things always take a bit of time especially sewing up um, and the other downside to it is that it's not the world's neatest edge so you don't get a nice crocheted edge or anything on it but it's a very serviceable um, cast off method when you get to the last stitch you come backwards through it like so and then just put your needle through the loop and tie it off now you can then lift it off and you can see you've got yourself a nice cast off elastic edge it's not hugely neat but it will stop it from unraveling so that's method one now then method two uses the latch tool so it's called a latch tool cast off um, and what we're going to do this time is we're not going to pull the um, needles forward and we are going to leave the weight hanging on the knitting to give it a bit of tension. Now this one is done from the end opposite where the yarn was broken. So this yarn is coming off this side and we don't need any length of yarn there um, and we're going to start from the end opposite it. And what we're going to do is we're going to hook the needle, hook the, the latch tool around the needle, okay, and then we're going to hook the stitch off the needle and onto the latch tool which is a bit fiddly but it can be done. So by doing that okay i've now got the stitch on my latch tool the next thing i'm going to do is i'm going to um, pull the second stitch off and can you see my first stitch is behind the latch and my second stitch is in front of the latch so when i pull it through the second stitch pulls through the latch and then i can go down the row doing exactly the same thing to all the stitches okay so what i'm going to end up doing is doing a sort of little chain, a bit like crochet, such that I end up... Now, the problem with this one, it's a very good, neat way to cast off, but you can see that what I'm doing is I'm tightening up the knitting as I go. So it tends to bunch it all together. So it's good for the tops of hats, um, and it's good for things like um, short pieces of knitting, like you're doing let's say a raglan jumper um, where the sleeves come to a point at the end and this will be good for just casting off the last couple of stitches um, now notice by the way look this stitch is pulling out loads and loads and loads so i can actually take it off and pull this through okay and then i can actually physically pull this knitting tight with the end okay and then pop the end of the yarn through this hole and just pull it tight and take it off the weight so the end of this yarn can now go through this loop and i can just pull it tight now it's a really inelastic finish so it is going to 
be tighter than normal. Look, it's really quite short. It's a really nice, neat finish, but it's totally inelastic. You can't pull that at all. Um, so as I say, this is good for the ends of hats. It's good for the ends of flat pieces of cloth. It'll keep its end, keep its shape fairly well, and it looks nice and neat. But don't use it on collars. Right, now then, for the last one, we are moving uh, to a more top view. And you can see I've still got my weight attached. Um, and this one, I have the yarn coming off the left hand end. This is because I'm left-handed and I find it's much easier to do. You can do any of these cast-offs from the left or from the right, depending on what handed you are. Now, this has a real advantage, which is that you end up hanging the knitting over the sinker pegs so it doesn't come off as you go. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my single latchet tool and I'm going to, I have to start on the side with the yarn. And I'm going to transfer this stitch across. And look, I'm lifting it over the sinker pegs and onto the next stitch over, which I pull through. So now I've got two stitches on the one needle. I'm going to wrap my yarn around my needle. And as you can see, when I pull it back, I create another stitch, which I'm going to lift over the sinker pegs and on to the next needle. I'm going to get my yarn and wrap it round and pull it through. And I carry on down the row, lifting it over the sinker pegs onto the next needle, wrapping it and pulling it through. And as you can see, as I'm lifting it over the sinker pegs, I'm doing two things. One, I'm leaving the knitting hanging on the sinker pegs so it's not going to pull out of shape. And two, I'm guaranteeing at least a certain amount of slack in this because this um, which is a bit like a sort of crochet chain stitch, uh, is a very, very tight method of uh, casting off. This is a really nice edge. It's my favourite edge, but again, totally unsuitable for use in, um, in anything like a collar or a cuff, which requires a bit of give. Um, it is good for the ends of table mats and, and uh, even coasters. People knit coasters sometimes, slightly randomly. Somewhere or other I have a 1950s knitting pattern for knitted underwear, which I'm sure is incredibly comfortable. Um, and it's used around the leg openings for that. Now, when you get to the last one, you pull it through and you put it quite big, like so. And then you just pop the end through and tighten it off and you're done. Now, let me pull this off the machine. I'll show you what it looks like. Get it out of the needle. Um, and I'll show you what it looks like. I'll just take it off the weights. And you can see that it's a really nice, let's get it slightly on a nice sort of chain edge. Again, the looser you make it, this was slightly elastic, um, but it's not still not good for collars. Um, and it makes a very nice, neat edge. So there are three ways of casting off. So now we can cast on, we can make things bigger and smaller, shape the knitting, and we can cast off. So the last the two things that we need to know, which I'll cover in the next two lessons, are partial knitting, uh, which is another way of shaping, and also knitting a couple of hems. So I'll see you next time. Goodbye.